Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Today we are going to do another melt and pour tutorial. I am going to be using the extra clear melt and pour soap base from Crafter's Choice. And I'm going to try to achieve something similar to this look. This is actually cold process soap, but um, it was posted in one of the soap groups that I follow and I thought it would be a good idea to try to see if we can mimic this with melt and pour. So I'm also going to be using this base because I've heard that it's a good suspension base. I've never worked with it before, so this will be the first time I'm using it. Um, I'm also using High Tide from Candle Science to fragrance this. I love it. I honestly just like beachy smells, so if you like it, you'll like that too. Um, and then these are the micas that I'm going to be using. They're all from Nurture Soap. Um, I like using their micas. You'll see them on a lot of my videos just because they come in the smaller sample sizes that are perfect for melt and pour. Um, so I just started off, I didn't really measure anything, I just cut off a chunk of the clear melt and pour soap base and I chopped it down and then I melted it down and for this section I'm going to be actually adding just the gold um, colorant because I kind of want to make my soap mimic that green one that was in the um, picture. It didn't come out exactly the same, but I thought I got it pretty close. So I'm also going to be using my cavity mold. Each one of these individual molds holds about four ounces of soap. So if I would have done just four bars, I would have got the perfect amount of soap and my soap wouldn't have come out a little bit funny at the end you'll see it but since this is just an experiment I'm not too concerned about it. Um, the first thing I did do though is spritz it down really well with rubbing alcohol so that the soap pops out really nicely when we're done and I lost my little spoons for measuring out the mica so I'm just using a popsicle stick because I don't really need a lot of mica for the amount of soap that I have so just put a little bit on there and then um, spritz some rubbing alcohol in the container and then just kind of mixed it up until it was fully incorporated. So now that the color is fully incorporated, I just went ahead and waited till the skin started to form just a little bit. And then I went really high in the soap mold and I just kind of poured and drizzled it. I try not to fill the cavity too much um, because I wanted to give it, you know, that kind of effect that was in the example. Um, you could use a pipette as well for drizzling the soap and that way you'd have it a little bit more controlled. Um, it's totally up to you. If you have another idea, go ahead and leave a comment below how you would do this. Um, I also like to melt down my soap base. I do this sometimes is I'll save a section of the soap aside and I'll melt everything down and you can see this is at about 160 degrees right now which is really hot so I'll kind of just dunk the other pieces that I had set aside and I'll start mixing them in um, so that the soap temperature cools down a little faster. Uh, that's just a little tip I give you. The only thing about doing that is you do have to make sure that all the chunks get out um, and that you're mixing it really well because otherwise you'll have like white chunks in the middle of your soap. Um, I don't do it a lot, I just kind of wanted to put it in this tutorial so that way you guys could get another idea of how to do things with melt and pour soap. During this time I also added the mica and then the desired amount of fragrance oil um, and I just kind of made sure it was mixed in there and fully incorporated. And then once it was fully incorporated I went ahead and got another little pitcher and I mixed a little bit more of the green mica and the glittery sparkly mica um, just so that you could have a little bit of contrast in the soap. Um, part of the reason that I started it all out with the um, big container and just measuring out mica is so that I was for sure going to get two tones and I can easily tell how drastically colored they are from each other, if that makes sense. So um, you can kind of experiment with it or do it your own way or do two different colors, but I just thought it would look good with a more like monochromatic color scheme.
Now that I've gotten the soaps to the desired color, I'm going to get ready to pour them in the mold. Um, one thing that I did notice with this soap base is that it seemed to me, and I could be wrong, that the temperature of the soap kind of cooled much quicker than other soaps that I've used. And um, it just seemed like maybe that's why it is a good suspending soap base. Um, I don't know if you guys you've used it before. You could also leave a comment, let others know what your experience is with that soap base. So I went ahead first and I started and I just kind of drizzled around all of the cavities to make sure that I had a nice desired look for the first color and since there wasn't a lot of it that's why I started with that one. And then I went ahead and once it like slightly hardened, not a lot, I just went ahead and started pouring the other color. I didn't want to pour that too quickly because I didn't want it to like fully break through and I wanted the two colors to still look separate but like kind of a marbled effect. So just try not to print, uh, pour the soap too quickly. And like I said, you can see there's some of the chunks of the soap falling in there. Again, just a soap experiment um, that I like to do. And, you know, a lot of times I'm not concerned if they, these soaps turned out ugly because I just use them for my personal use or I just give them away to friends. Um, once I start getting a little bit better at this, maybe I'll sell them. But right now I don't have the time or energy for that. So... And you guys can just, you know, learn from my mistakes as I go along. Um, there was one other thing that I did try this time with the soaps um, because they were starting to harden up a little quickly. I don't know if anyone has ever done this, but I decided to bust out my heat gun and just kind of melt some of that soap down so that it would be um, a little bit easier to work with. One thing I do want to say about the heat gun too is make sure you don't get too close to the soap because you don't want to really scorch it or anything like that. Um, and the silicone molds should be okay because they're kind of designed to handle high heat. Um, I've never done this before. It might in the long term ruin your silicone mold. Um, so it's just again something I'm trying out. I have other ones of these molds and I've had them for a long time. Um, but once that the tops were smoothed out a little bit. I went ahead and I drizzled a little bit more gold on top and I wanted it to not break through the top but as you can see on some of these the soap might have been just a little bit too hot because it did break through. So I'm just going to show you with the temp gun really quick what the different temperatures were. So if you're trying to mimic this at home you can kind of get the desired look that you're going for. After I let these sit for about, I would say, three hours, I went ahead and popped them out of the mold. And how they look here on the back side is exactly what I wanted. Um, it's not exactly like that picture, but I am very pleased with the end result. Um, I like the two tones of green. I'm very happy with the glitter that I added in there. It came out really nice, and the gold speckles are just the way I wanted them. So I would say I'm definitely going to try this again with a little bit more soap and do a similar technique to see if I can get a little bit better results. But overall, the end result on this, I would say, was pretty good. So thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I do try to upload videos every week, uh, mostly melt and pour soap videos every once in a while. I'll do cold process soap, or I will just do other bath and body um, soap or not so Bath and Body um, products and tutorials and recipes. So like I said, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you and see you next week.